Could the U.S. Air Force's sudden push to speed up F-15EX production be the most surprising and strategically risky move of the decade? Imagine a fleet of heavy hitter Eagles arriving faster than anyone expected. More payload, more sensors, and more muscle ready to fill gaps the stealth fighters can't. For years you've heard about stealth, F-35s and invisible bombers stealing the headlines. But the Air Force quietly decided it needed more of something else. A big, fast, affordable workhorse that can carry heavy payloads, launch long-range weapons, and show up where raw capacity matters. That weapon of choice? The F-15EX Eagle II. And the decision to accelerate its production is shaking defense circles. If you want the full breakdown, the why, the how, and the risks, hit subscribe, ring the bell, and join our tactical jet community where we dig deeper than headlines. The F-15EX represents a significant leap in modernizing the 142nd wing, enhancing our operational readiness and effectiveness to better protect our skies and communities. It also provides an incredible opportunity for our airmen to train on one of the most sophisticated fighter jets in the U.S. arsenal. Myths versus reality. The heavy fighter, not a stopgap. So, what's true and what's hype about this acceleration? Myth. The F-15EX is just an old jet with a new paint job. A stopgap until the F-35 and future fighters arrive. Reality. The F-15EX is purpose-built for a different set of tasks heavy payload, electronic warfare, and massed standoff weapons. It's not replacing stealth, it's augmenting it. The Air Force and Boeing are pushing production hard because commanders want capability now, not 10 years from now. Think of it like a logistics problem. You can have one supercar in a race, the stealth fighter, or you can field a whole convoy of trucks that carry the fuel, missiles, and backup the supercar needs. The F-15EX is the truck convoy. Strategic impact, capacity, redundancy, and messaging. This push isn't just industrial, it's strategic. More F-15 EXS means faster replacement of aging F-15 CDE airframes and Air National Guard squadrons. A larger fleet able to carry heavy standoff weapons and decoys that lighten the load on stealth lone wolf missions. A visible signal to adversaries that the U.S. can surge high-capacity firepower where it counts. And here's the detail that changes everything. The FY26 planning documents and related reporting show the Air Force and Pentagon moving money and acquisition plans to favor more F-15EX buys. In effect, shifting procurement balance toward platforms that maximize near-term capacity rather than long-term stealth-only investments. That policy choice reshapes force posture in ways you'll see on base maps and budget charts. Performance and design what the F-15EX actually brings to the fight. So what does the EX really do? Why not more F-35s instead? Here's the short list. Payload and range. The F-15EX can carry an enormous weapons load, internal and external, making it ideal for massed standoff strikes, heavy air-to-ground loads, and long-range escort missions. The platform was marketed as delivering best-in-class payload, range, and speed. Open architecture and growth. Designed with modular avionics and an open mission systems architecture, the EX can accept future sensors, EW suites, and weapons faster and cheaper than redesigning a stealth aircraft. Workhorse reliability. The EX leverages a mature airframe lineage, F-15 family, allowing faster production and lower training slash maintenance curves than wholly new designs. Rapid fielding. Because it's derived from an export line and established supply chains, Boeing and the U.S. Air Force can accelerate deliveries more quickly than a newly certified airframe. Flight Global reports the company is ramping production with a goal of reaching an assembly rate of two aircraft per month by 2026. But don't mistake speed for perfection. The program faces supply chain and integration risk. Industrial reality. How fast can Boeing actually build them? Here's where the story gets messy. Boeing has publicly reported a large pipeline of F-15EXs in various stages of assembly, roughly 90 jets noted in multiple reports, and the company projects a stepped-up production rhythm to meet rising orders. Flight Global and other outlets say the goal is to hit about two jets per month by late 2026, roughly 24 per year, dramatically higher than 2024's single-digit deliveries. That sounds simple on paper. 
In practice, production lines are tight webs of suppliers, qualified labor, and security clearance processes. Why America's F-15X is the most feared jet in 2025. Most fighter jets are fast, loud, and powerful, but none of them are causing more fear in 2025 than America's F-15EX. Why? Because this jet isn't just about speed or firepower. It's bringing something to the skies that other countries aren't ready for. Unmatched strength, deadly accuracy, and next-level technology all packed into a design that's been upgraded to dominate today's battles. Even countries with advanced air defense systems are now asking one big question. How do you stop a jet that can outgun, outfly, and outlast almost anything in the sky? The Air and Space Forces report warns that parts shortages and specialized components remain real risks that can bottleneck output even when assembly lines are humming. Risk. Strikes, supply chains, and political choices. And if building them fast is one challenge, keeping that promise when politics and labor step in is another. A recent strike at Boeing defense facilities and other industry labor tensions have been flagged as potential disruptors for several defense programs including the F-15 line. If labor disputes, FAA limits, or supplier delays escalate, that two-per-month target could slip, with strategic consequences. So yes, the U.S. is rushing production, but rushing on paper is not the same as delivering squadrons to bases on time. You get capacity only if the industrial base holds. Global Chessboard, what America's rivals will do. What happens when you flood the field with heavy fighters? Simple. Adversaries adjust. Russia could respond by accelerating long-range strike assets and layered air defenses, betting that massed F-15 EX swarms must be met with saturating missile defenses and high-volume interceptor fleets. China may push forward with more J-16 slash J-20 sorties, deepen its anti-access networks, and prioritize standoff weapons to hit our basing and logistics nodes. But here's the twist. The F-15EX is no quiet herald. Fielding dozens more of them is a visible signal. Bases light up, training sorties spike, and the world sees capacity growing in near real time. That signaling can deter some aggression or provoke others to race to counter it. The planned growth of the EX fleet in recent budget planning is already reshaping basing maps and alliance commitments. If China and Russia see dozens more EXs lighting up radars, do they back down? or double their bets. The fear economy. Why budgets, not just bombs, matter. Make no mistake, accelerating the EX is also a budget play. Producing more non-stealth jets quickly is cheaper per unit than buying more F-35s, and it pressures competitors to match capacity rather than only invest in stealth. The net result? A kind of economic attrition. If America can buy and field more capacity quickly, rivals must either spend more or accept a capability gap. History shows this can be a drain. The Cold War's long arms race strained economies. Today, budgets are tighter, but the dynamics are the same. Perceived advantage begets spending, and spending can become the weapon. That economic pressure is part of the strategic calculus behind the EX surge. If you're still with me, hit that like button and tell me below, would you rather have a dozen stealth jets or 30 heavy hitters that can carry more weapons today? Drop your pick. I read every comment. Ethical and operational shadows, training, risk, and escalation. There's another side you don't hear at contract ceremonies. Readiness. Rushing planes into service without parallel upgrades in training, logistics, and maintenance can create brittle capability. More jets sitting on the tarmac aren't helpful if crews aren't ready, or spare parts aren't there. Worse, visibly bulking up air power near a tense region can raise the risk of miscalculation. If a run of F-15 EXS arrives at a forward base during a crisis, the opponent may interpret it as preparation for strikes, increasing pressure and the chance of mistakes. The EX gives commanders options, but options used too quickly or without clear communication can escalate fast. The next frontier, how the EX could evolve the fight. Think about the EX not as an endpoint, but as a platform. With its open architecture, it's primed for upgrades. New EW systems, faster data links, larger missile mixes, and teaming with drones for distributed lethality. That's the real reason the Air Force wants more of them. Not just because they're cheap, but because they're flexible upgrade platforms for the layered fight ahead. 
Imagine F-15 EXS working as motherships for drone swarms, carrying extra missiles for launch and return tactics, or acting as heavy EW nodes that blind enemy sensors, all things that change how air campaigns are planned. That's the future they're buying time to build. Conclusion. A shocking move. Smart, risky, or both? Here's the final truth. Speeding up F-15 EX production is a bold, pragmatic choice. It gives the Air Force fast capacity, payload flexibility, and a platform that can evolve for decades. But it's not risk-free. Parts shortages, labor disputes, delivery delays, and geopolitical signaling create a web of consequences. So, what do you think? Is the U.S. making a smart bet, prioritizing capacity now? Or is this a risky rush that could leave us with airplanes in parking lots and holes in readiness? Drop your thoughts below. I read every comment and I'll reply to the best ones. And if this deep dive hooked you, don't miss what's next. We'll be unpacking how the U.S. plans to integrate the F-15EX with drone swarm tactics and what that would mean for air combat. Subscribe, hit that bell, and share with anyone who follows military tech. Thanks for watching, and remember, power is measured not just in stealth, but in how quickly you can put it on the runway when the world needs it. Subscribe for more military tech deep dives. Hit the bell for instant updates. Share this with anyone who loves strategy and aircraft. Because if the EX surge is just the opening move, what comes after could redefine not only the Air Force's future, but the entire balance of air power.